the years of political turmoil and social upheaval and the continuous battles between feuding lords all took its toll on the Irish system and Irish politics and English politics. And it led to a weakening of the imposed English rule over Ireland uh, throughout the 13th to 15th century. And it was during this time there was a bit of a Gaelic revival. Um, this is also the time when the Norman invaders became Nice Gali na Gaeli Fane, which means more Irish than the Irish themselves. We're talking about the families like the Fitzgeralds and the Butlers and the Ormonds. As they began to intermarry, they spoke the native tongue, they began to adopt native customs, beliefs and laws. They, an interesting way of looking at it is, as invaders with a different culture and a different system and a different language, who are coming to this country called Ireland, let's imagine Ireland is the host and this foreign system is almost like a virus and the virus is trying to spread throughout the land and establish itself as the as the reality as the polity of the day it, so this invasion this attempted infect you know infection of of the country with a foreign culture failed because the host actually subsumed it into into itself the c existing culture that was there actually converted those who came over to change it so that really raises the question as why why were the people who were coming over changing to the irish customs and the customs of the native irish people and throughout this time england continued to unsuccessfully uh, assert its dominance over ireland through the imposed supremacy of Crown Law and British Parliament, English Parliament. The decline of the Anglo-Norman lords through their merging with Irish culture um, would be described by the English, particularly the English monarchs, as degeneracy into Irish culture. With the arrival of the Black Death on Irish shores in 1348, this also weakened the Anglo-Norman strongholds. The places that were hit most were the built-up strongholds, the towns and villages that were surrounding the Pale, and the people out in the rural areas were, were obviously hit the least. And shortly after this, uh, an interesting piece of legislation was passed. It was really an effort of the of the British establishment to restrain the decay of English power in Ireland. So in 1367, they proclaimed the Statutes of Kilkenny uh, in the reign of King Edward III. Uh, the preamble to the Statutes makes the intended purpose perfectly clear. It says, Whereas at the conquest of the land of Ireland, the English of the said land used the English language, mode of writing and apparel, and were governed and ruled, according to the English law, in due subjection. But now, many English of the said land, forsaking the English language, manners, mode of writing, laws, and usages, live and govern themselves according to the manners, fashion, and language of the Irish enemies, and also have made diverse marriages and alliances between themselves and the Irish enemies aforesaid. Whereby the said land and the liege people thereof, the English language, the allegiance due to our Lord the King, and the English laws there, are put in subjection and decayed, and the Irish enemies exalted and raised up contrary to reason. Our Lord the King, considering the mischiefs aforesaid, in the consequence of the grievous complaints of the commons of his said land, called to his parliament held at Kilkenny. You see, the Irish spoke their own native tongue, called Gaelge. They did not use saddles when riding horses. They wore different clothes, which included hooded cloaks. They grew facial hair, including moustaches, and they played their own native sports, like hurling. Whenever there was a matter that needed to be resolved, a dispute, they always referred to the Irish laws, Where, while the English did none of these things. 
and the statutes of Kilkenny go on to state, whereas diversity of government and different laws in the same land cause difference in allegiance and disputes among the people. It is agreed and established that no Englishman, having disputes with any other Englishman, shall henceforth make caption or take pledge, distress or vengeance against any other, but that they shall sue each other at the common law, and that no Englishman be governed in the termination of their disputes by Breton law, which reasonably ought not be called law, being a bad custom. And if any do the contrary, and thereof be attainted, he shall be taken and imprisoned and adjudged as a traitor. So the issue here was clearly allegiance. The Bible tells us that no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Desirous of establishing his royal will across the land of Ireland, King Edward's decree is actually directed at his subjects, those who have sworn allegiance to him, and he demands that all future disputes among them be settled by the English courts using the English common law or else face the penalty of being judged a traitor to the crown. Clearly, as I said before, the people who were sent here to colonise Ireland found themselves naturally drawn towards the customs of the native Irish people. And we need not speculate too much about why this was, because it becomes clear from a deeper investigation of the principles of justice found in early Irish law. But once again, this, the statutes of Kilkenny, this decree of the king, was in vain. Because it had little effect anywhere else in Ireland except for the Pale. 